there right, we so go. First up, All we right. got Dread Prison Glaive. One mana, one three Demon Hunter weapon. Honorable kill. Kill damage equal to your hero's attack to the enemy hero. For those of you who don't know, Honorable Kill says deal exact lethal damage on your turn for a bonus. Yeah, I think this is a one. This um, looks like a one to me. Yes. Yep. I, like... I really don't see what this does that's that good compared yeah. to a True Aim Crescent or a Tusk Piercer. Honorable Kill seems like a little bit of a nightmare to me. Yeah, and even sort of like, when do you want an early weapon, uh, like turns early to, to control the board? One is your Demon Hunter already has that hero power. Um, two, early damage doesn't matter unless you're going for a board advantage. Mm -hmm. So this just kind of card, the times where it's theoretically useful, it's, it's not theoretically. It's like has anti-synergy with itself. So it's just, it's just, just a complete, like this is just a truly bad card. Um, oh. so, so it's kind of fine in as much as you're a demon hunter, you can give yourself plus one attack, and then this can honorably kill one health minions and two health minions, and then you're kind of sort of going face and trading at the same time, and that's okay. But I don't know that it's ever more than okay. I don't think it's good enough in a constructed world. Yeah, I mean, you have to be like okay. I was saying is if you're, if you're playing this and like using your hero power to kill off minions, well, guess what? You're probably playing more the, the, the defensive uh, side of the matchup. Mm -hmm. So chances are getting a little four or five face damage doesn't really matter because you're, you're the beat down or you're the beat down. I, I get the mixed up. So really you don't need that extra. The extra face damage isn't valuable in times that an early weapon is valuable, if that makes sense. So Sure. I, I think there are just also other cards that I'd rather play than this. Yeah. This doesn't really push towards any particular strategy, any particular plan, win condition, however you want to phrase it. It's just kind of a thing, and yeah. a thing is not good enough in my book. Alright, mm -hmm. after your hero attacks, summon two 1-1 one -one Fellings. Battleborn uh, Vanguard, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. I, I hadn't seen this card. This card's insane. This card um, does look pretty good. It's just so efficient. Like, you, you know, it's a natural... I mean, it could just be a a two mana first time summon two two and two one ones with your your hero power. Um, it reminds me a lot of that Eladari Seder or whatever it was called Seder Overseer. Three yeah. Two, two, whenever you attack out a two two. But this is this is two mana, so even it's better. It's a little better. Yeah, it's a little better though. It, it's more know, wide the, the Seder, and less. Yeah. The Seder was not insane. The Seder was just fine. This is a little better than fine, so I'd rate this as a good card. And there are some synergies that go with it, of course. Yeah. Uh, Overall, I, I think people... I think it's broken. I don't. Some people think it's broken. I don't know if it's broken. I think it's just good. I, I, I think so. Three. Cards like this, while within their class, are incredibly powerful. Like, of like two-drop minions. Uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not the card that completely warps the meta on its own. Like, mm -hmm. like it needs... The deck to go with it, but I still think I think this is a four. It just it's just insanely good. Like the just the raw efficiency is, is there, you know? It's not yeah. as flashy as like it's it's not like meta warping the way uh, Octobot is, so you could maybe you know maybe say it's three, but I, I think it's I'm just gonna put four. It's just too good in what it does. So I'm mostly giving it a three. I mean it is a must kill target, it's an easy kill target. And most of the time, this is going to be played when the Demon Hunter is, does not have a weapon on one. Sometimes they will. A lot of times they won't. Yeah. So it's like on turn three, you get to hero power them for one. You make a 2-2 two, two, and 2-1-1. Two, one, one. So that's, that's fine. That's good. It discounts your giants. That's nice. But I don't think this is going to be a game break and oh my god, look out for it type thing. Like This card looks the, the, the most build enabling of all these... These uh, token DH cards I've seen so far, so um, yeah, it looks just, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm a little lukewarm on it, but it looks okay. Anyways, right, so uh, next up, Field of Strife, two mana, Demon Hunter spell. Your minions have plus one attack. Lasts three turns. <laughs> just me. Is this looked like the like it was a better card, and then it got the uh, Warsaw Commander uh treatment you know it, it, was, it does not look great does it? <laughs> yeah i like uh like it was a leader without the body for two mana for three turns 
Oh. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I assuming you're going one on this. Yeah, it's it's like these kind of cards I haven't seen before, and I don't have a a good feel for the. I mean, if I'm gen, if, if, if I could see me being wrong, it's a two, but I could never see me being wrong, and it's a three, and it's just like insanely good. But maybe yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you get a bunch of rush minions and you play this. I don't know. It's I'm going with one. It just looks so bad. You it know? looks terrible. I don't yeah. know what the purpose was here, but good for them. Yeah. All right. Next up, flag runner, three mana, one six. Whenever a friendly minion dies, gain plus one attack. Gives you flashbacks, kind of the Darkshire Councilman. Yeah, that was that was a playable good card. Um, yes, but and this is a big but on this. Darkshire Councilman says whenever you summon. This says whenever oh, a friendly true. minion dies. And that's if you true. want to play the role of a beatdown deck and you're trading your stuff away, that's... Eh. That's a good point. Um, that being said, uh, it's I, it has synergy with the natural deck. It's, it's annoying. Uh, I'll go three on this one. I think it's good. Um, we'll I'm going to go a little bit divergent. I'm going to go with a one. I oh, think one. This card is okay. actually good. Okay. The good part of it is you can play it. It'll stick to the board, probably. Yeah. And that's nice. The downside is it requires several bases of setup. You need to have stuff, you need to trade the stuff away, and then the flag runner needs to attack before it really does anything particularly impactful. And even then, let's say this yeah, card was cool. naturally a three mana X6, whatever attack you want yeah. X to be. Naturally, what would X have to be to play a three mana whatever six? That's a good point. Uh, three, all right, I, you convinced me to go down to two. No, I'm, 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 not a, I'm not at one. Uh, right. but put me to a two. Uh, one seems, I think, it, like, it, you know, it's a truly terrible card if the token DH exists, but this card doesn't make the cut, you know? Yeah, the ones it's, I was, I was theory crafting, it's like, you could do a flag runner board build if you want. You could do an AOE build if you want. You could do a heavy cycle package, a lifesteal package, a death rattle package. And flag runner, I don't think, made the cut in most of them. My imaginary lists that probably won't exist. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. I'm not high on it, but we'll see. Okay. All right. Next up, flanking maneuver. Four mana spell. Summon a four two demon with rush. If it dies, that is the demon this turn. Summon another. Reminds me so of the old uh, flanking card. Uh, flank flanking strike from Hunter. Restless mummy, which was really good. Uh, mm -hmm. Restless, yeah, it's very similar to restless mummy. Now, Hodo mount. The, this one, yeah, the you have to kill something, but you had to kill something with old flanking strike. So this looks really, you know. Um, now I don't know, you know, Demon Hunter already has great, like has things like I Beam and like already really solid removal. But this could be used in a develop like a you could run this in more of a tempo deck because sometimes tempo decks you know, they they have lots of uh, good stuff except for. They don't have like good ways to interact with board maybe eff effectively in certain spots so i think this is a three it's uh just seems yep. good enough i i could see it you know it's uh, does it make the cut relative to other removals but like it, overall power level looks good and synergy with other things looks reasonable so yeah it can kill a giant for yeah you. that's true yeah. like restless mommy was a playable card flanking strike was a playable card i don't know if either was broken in its time Oh, yeah. They're both good, and this card's also probably good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on board for a three. That sounds good to me. All Next right. up, we've got Warden of Chains. Four mana, two six, taunt. Battle cry. If you are holding a demon that costs five or more, it's a three eight taunt. Yeah. I, 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 I give this the, 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 the test of I don't think this even makes the cut in Big DH. Because, uh, you know, it has such anti synergy with having the big demons. Um, Does it? That's, that's a lot of wall on it. It's a four mana. Yeah. Three that kind of but gets you, know, you to the big demon. You can't run the six mana card. Um, I don't know. Six mana card. What, what six mana card? The the, can the, run? the the one that summons you two. I guess that's not the big demon. Uh, but oh no, uh, that yeah, we can't run the. I'm gonna proving ground something. Yeah. Yeah, we can't do that. Interesting synergy with Proving Grounds. There is an 8 attack neutral honorable kill deal 8 damage to the enemy hero. 
If you summon two of those and they kill each other, you 16 the opponent. That's oh, I didn't see that. That's uh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's I actually... I think Warden of Chains has a potential in a big demon hunter. Okay. Really you, you convinced me to... Can I do a 1.5? <laughs> it's only a better time before two. we get the decimal points, so... It's, I'm uh, going for a 2 on it. Okay. If big demon hunter is good, this is a card that might go in that deck. And I think there's reason to suspect that Big Demon Hunter might be okay. Yeah. So, I'm up for this on the Warden of Chains. Some people are talking about running Vandar in Big Demon Hunter, which is also a big mitigating factor here. And maybe Vandar is better than Warden of Chains. We'll see. The uh, one that we got for free that can reduce the cost of minions in your deck if they're all more expensive. Oh, yeah, that's Vandar. a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think Warden of Chains has some potential. I've, I've played Lakari Fellhound before, and I know that's a good card versus aggressive decks. And this yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's actually an interesting. Cards. That's he yeah, has the same stats, right? So mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Right. Um. Next up, Sigil of Reckoning, five mana spell. Spell at the start of your next turn, summon a random demon from your hand. Okay. Um. So I think people were saying this is like like Skull. The one big difference is Skull, you know, you could get multiple Crocs, which was insane. Yep. Um, yep. You know, uh, this does cost card value. Um, and, you know, it's... But, but you know, it's kind of like the... the what's the... Possessed... What's the... Possessed, possessed lackey? lackey? Yeah, Possessed it's Lackey. It's like a Possessed Lackey. It's yeah. like a Skull of the Minari. One yeah, so only, but it's a one shot for I don't know putting Illidari Inquisitor into play by turns five or yeah. six. Yeah, so could you know it could make it you know it's very similar power level, so I think it could definitely be playable if the, if the whole archetype works. So this is um, the card that makes the archetype work. I think. Yeah, I'm going four on this. Okay, um, I'm gonna go three. I'm mm -hmm. uh yeah, but it's just. So, but uh, this card could also be played in not big demon hunter, and that you could just play this to cheat out Niladari Inquisitor or, or a giant yeah, or something. That's interesting. It, I that's think this card is just good. Is there a way you can hit twice to the face with demon hunter? Like you cheat out an Niladari Inquisitor, uh, and then you somehow get like Doomhammer, and uh, I'm trying uh, to. I don't think so. Uh, unlikely. I don't think you can attack again if you switch heroes. Okay, interesting. Okay. Don't, yeah, I don't think you can. But anyway, I think this card is really good on its own. So, there's that. Transform. Next up, we got Carrion Fell Song. Yeah, six minus six, six. Battle card transform into a six, six copy of a demon in your deck. Yeah, I still, I don't know. I, uh. It Commander? I, I, like, I don't even think this makes the cut in, like, in the big Demon Hunter deck, but maybe it does. It is. I mean, Big Warrior already sees play, uh, so maybe, you know, you play this and it's like the 6-2, uh, but as a 6-6 six, six of the Demon, you know, you have to, like, hit that 7-9 pretty much, right, for it to be, like, really good. We got really Commander. We got Taint Heart Tormentor. Oh, t yeah. You, you never we got Miladari Inquisitor. Well, the Inquisitor is not that good in this, because you remember, you're, you're probably going to be behind on board, so you're not yeah. in the position well, that... Lady. Yeah. Six mana, six, six. Not great. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with two. Have the, uh, we have yeah. the other thing that cheats out big demons from your hand. The 8-3 for Demon Hunter. On Death Rattle. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff for the archetype. I would give... I, Carrie, I could see her a two or a three. I think I'm going to go with three. Simply on the grounds of sometimes this hits Pit Commander. And when that hits Pit Commander and pulls another big demon out of your deck, you likely yeah. win the game. I mean, I think it's what's going to happen is like it's going to be situations where your opponent's about to kill you. You play this. If you hit Pit Commander and into Taint, you you stay in the game, and then you oh you hit Pit Commander to the Illidari, and they just go like, you know, Prize Plunder, Shadow Shadow, Prize Plunder, and kill you. You know, oh, sure. so uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking there. So, but yeah, it happens. Right. I view it just as another source of mana cheating, and that's pretty neat. 
So up next, we got the, the hero card, Kurtris Demon Render, 6 mana, gain 5 armor. Battle Cry 7 2, 1 4 demons with rush. Their attack is improved by your hero power attacks. By your hero attacks this game. Every time your hero attacks, those gain plus 1 attack each. Your hero power becomes 1 mana, gain plus 2 attack this turn. After a friendly minion attacks, refresh this. This is one of the hardest ones I've had evaluating because it's. Um, the battle cry relative, you know, is not that strong. Um. And the hero power requires a lot of synergy, but that being said, you know, you can use this and just, um, you know, with, with the rush minions. Uh, but what's also weird is like a class that, here's the thing, a class that getting a lot of attack in is usually like if you're playing a more defensive class and they'll just play around, you know, the, the minion things, you know? So it's a thing of like the classes that you really want to get, you know, you know, 10 attack or something ridiculous, mm -hmm. it's not as useful. Uh, it's, it's harder to get down, if that makes sense. So the combo people are talking about with this is you play Fellfire Dreadeye, which reduces your hero power by one. So you get free hero powers. Oh, and Then you yeah. play Expendable Performers, and you get a board full of rushers. Each one attacks, you get plus two attack, and then they die and they resummon themselves, attack again, you get plus two attack for each, and then can kind of sort of otk somebody with that that's really okay can i put it like this as a two with deck building potential yeah, you, um, can, you can put whatever you want for this yeah <laughs> like i i i don't think the objective power level of this card independent uh is that strong uh but maybe mm -hmm. someone can make a build around and maybe it's good enough to slot in some you know some deck but uh oh but when it refresh it costs one so when, it, when you red eye makes your it's an aura that makes your hero power cost one less. Okay, so every that's time what it I refreshes, thought. it'll cost zero. So somebody somebody a, was saying, yeah. yeah okay. I'm going with a four on this, partially okay. because I think the rushers are themselves just good. Mm -hmm. If you summon two, three, four, or four, four rushers, even that is quite good. The armor is nice. The upgraded hero power is quite powerful. Oh, and there's I, potential. I, 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 I didn't even understand the improved by your hero attack this game. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll put it to yeah. three. Three with deck building potential. So. Sure. Because okay, you can summon a whole board, and Demon Hunter's always doing that. Okay, that's a lot better than I realized. Okay. My my real concern with this type of deck is simply, is it? I don't know if the deck is going to be good. It's a real untouched potential, and is it better at doing the thing that it wants to do as compared to a quest Demon Hunter, perhaps? Yeah, that, that's. I think that's like the that. billion dollar question for every card. It's like, hey, this card is great, but it's still not as good as a quest, you know. So I think that's going to be the, the the interesting uh, dilemma with cards. This expansion. The rate on this guy seems just seems just good. Yeah. Seems like you're going to clear some stuff off the board. You're going to gain some armor. Going to get a better hero power, and you also have potential to just. Yeah. Now I think about it, you. You could just rush a bunch of stuff in. Uh, mm -hmm. You've just been controlling the board and then played two giants, you know? Yep. Well, that sounds the, awesome. The, the giant deck is where this really is going to shine. and we did, It's an untested quantity. We don't know. Yeah. Speaking of, next card is Urzul Giant. 13 mana, 8-8 eight, eight demon. Costs one less for each friendly minion that has died this game. So Expendable Performers <laughs> does typically it's reduce done. this to zero. If it costs 13, assuming everything goes well. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's like Flesh Giant. Um, and you can see Flesh Giant uh, got, uh, it's kind of just natural, you know, you can plop it in your uh, normal deck and just kind of, I don't know, it, it's a thing of like 13 is pretty hard. Like that's it a really big hard. number. So I, you know, there's there's a number where this this card is absolutely broken, and there's a number where it's just meh. And I don't know where that number is. The yeah. number where it's actually broken might be 11. It might be 14. So it's, mm -hmm. I don't really know, and I haven't done the math of like, all right, let's simulate like 20 games in my brain. So I'll put, uh, this could be a four and this could be a two. You know, like, it's wow. really hard uh, to like... So let's just let's just have some fun. I'll put it as a four. So 
Right. No, I, uh, I think I'll join you on that four. I, I could have said three, two. So yeah. there, let's talk pros and cons of it. Pro, it's a demon, which means you can philosophy it. Oh, and, yeah. So it kind of is, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like the brutes. Okay. Yeah, you, you can have a very big giant turn. And you don't have to do it all in one turn like Brute. You can save this up over multiple turns. Big downside, it's going to take multiple turns. And this yeah. can do something... I imagine this deck is going to want to play Skull of Ghoul Dan. And this can potentially really block some outcast stuff for some time. Yeah. But with this and the Kurtris and the Expendable Performers idea, there is there's a deck here. Yeah. Now, I have no idea if that deck is good, but there is a deck. I mean, it's got some really powerful tempo things. It's got this Battle Word Vanguard that is, like, really, really strong. Um, it's got the Uzzeral Giant that, you know, and, you know, you could just do some hero powers and get this Kurtris going. And, you can, you know, often you can go Kurtris, like, maybe you've gotten your Uzzeral Giant down to, to four and you go Kurtris, clear the board, uh, and then play, mm -hmm. like, two Giants, you know? So, very, mm -hmm. very doable thing. So um, This is going to make for some big swing turns, for sure. But yeah. what turn is the swing turn is the big question. Is it yeah. six? Is it eight? I mean, it mm. meant, like, Flesh, Flesh Giant originally hit it down on turn four. And then, like, once in a while you could still get a Flesh Giant on turn five. So, uh, I'm not sure how much. But, yeah, you, you know, you run you run Battle Word Vanguard. You run this Flanking Maneuver. Uh, there's probably mm -hmm. some cards I'm forgetting about that are already in, already in standard. Um, you could do a like Death Rattle Demon dead. Hunter. You have a Razor Boar that dies, and then it yeah. pulls out. And devouring ectoplasm and then that dies and it summons a 2-2 two -two, and then that dies and you play like a renowned performers or something because your death rattle and that's three more minions this can come down relatively quickly i think yeah a lot of a lot of different ways to build this deck um and that that's going to be the art of it you know i the synergies yep. are there so um uh... yeah, there are like four or five different ways i envisioned you could possibly build this deck and i don't know i don't have a damn clue which one is close to better but <laughs> there's a lot of potential there and it's the kind of card that makes you want to build around it yeah yeah it's a, it's a, it's a big payoff so mm -hmm. all right cool so i think that does us for demon hunter right yep we're into druid starting out with capture cold tooth mine two mana spell choose one draw the lowest cost card of your deck or draw the highest cost card of your deck this is uh, this is really interesting uh it's a, i really like the design of this card because it's one you know a synergy with that two one but uh, the fact that, you know, you can tutor out a certain, like, you, you could run, you know, Lightning Bloom and Celestial and just be able to, you know, get the Celestial out faster consistently because that's, you know, often you're losing games because you don't draw Celestial, but they're going to run Scenario in Word usually, but you could use it to tutor out. So there, there are a lot of cool tutor things you Malagos can do with this. With it. You can what? tutor out the new Beast payoff yeah. from Matriarch with this. And yeah, it's got synergy with the Jerry Rig. It's got synergy with some of the new cards that are in the set for choose one synergies. Yeah, it, it, it's a weird one where it's like, uh, you know, Druid's, uh, Druid lists, lists at least the Celestial type feel relatively tight. So it's you know, what makes the cut kind of thing, you know, is this yeah. like how many two, you know, how many two mana card draw, how many two mana Druid draw card cards can you really have? But I think yeah. it's... But, you know, uh, you know, it's tutoring, so it's built. I'm going to go with two with a deck building potential. Um, I, I, too, am on a two for this. Yeah, but I think... The, I, I see that there are worlds where this is working, and I also see worlds where this is just kind of inefficient. Yeah, it's a tutor, but yeah, yeah. it's also two mana for just draw a card. Yep, so I, I think one of the big things is that you can draw a Lightning Bloom consistently, so you can ramp out stuff. So, like, mm -hmm. let's say your deck your old survival druid and if you don't get your survival or what's it survival, if you don't get your guardian animals down fast you're going to lose mm -hmm. the game it's one of those matchups you can play this on two like hit your lightning bloom maybe you already have a lightning bloom in hand and play the guardian animals on three uh yep. so you can so there, there, there's definitely the potential there for the you know but it's yeah i think it's definitely a deck builder's potential because it's kind of about um the synergy but like how you build your deck uh it's not like independently a power level it's, it's a very weak card it's a two mana draw one you know so yeah it, it's a maybe I, I could see this but i could also totally not see this yeah cool card next up we got claw fury adept 
You might have 2-3 Beast. Battle Cry, give all other friendly characters, that includes your hero, plus one attack this turn. Yeah, this just seems, you know, I think I was talking about, just very, like, independently strong. You barely need synergy, mm -hmm. you know? You barely need yeah, a Yeah, there's no real for... downside, is there? Yeah. So, I think this is just a four. Um, it just, it, like, will, will it be... Well, you have the deck that can just absolutely take advantage of this. Who knows? But also another thing is like things like um, Aggro Druid often struggle to fight for board. So like being able to play this and just kill a one health minion is useful, you know? Yeah, getting a ping that early in the game is quite good. Yeah. I, so. I think the ceiling on this is a bit low. Like, yeah, it's probably uh, fair. Snow the Soil. Ceiling on that's a bit low. Similar principle here, but this is clearly a good card. Yeah. I'm going to go three on it. Okay. I'm not sure it's nutty, nutty, but it's definitely playable. It's going in the deck. I'm positive about that. Art is just good. And also, it's a beast, which matters because we have a lot of beast synergy here. Speaking of, yeah. next card, we got Frost Wolf Kennels. Three mana, spell at the end of your turn, summon a 2 2 wolf with stealth. Lasts three turns. This is one I. I some of these cards. And I kind of put them in my mind as uh, uh, dormant cards that are similar. Um, and I really, I, I've evaluated dormant cards a lot better than other players because I tend to like overstated things. Um, oh, me too. So, like, even like it's you know it's kind of saving for the future. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think if it wasn't for the stealth, I would say this card is just terrible. But I would agree. but with the stealth, like just being able to like play this and then pull off. Harbor up. Uh, are, yeah, an arbor up, or even a you know maybe some sort of composting, composting. play. Yep. Um, and the fact this that they stay the stealth. Matriarch. So I, I don't know what deck runs this. I don't know if it makes for aggro druid or if it's some, but I think it, I, I don't know. It's 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 a card that. Can I put like a I'll put two point five with deck building potential because it's really like. I don't think you could just slot this in. We have a, a one to four deck. system. Yeah. You got to pick a lane here. Pick a two or a three. All right, I'll put I'm a going, two. I'm All going right. three. I'll put All a right. two with deck building potential because it's like you can't just – I don't think you just slot this into a deck. Like you have to have really thought about what your deck is doing because the tempo is very slow. Um, but I, I guess it's like you play three mana and you end your turn, you immediately do get that two-two for the next turn. So Yep. Um, I, I just see you play this on three. You get a two-two. You do whatever on four, you get another two, two, you leave them in stealth, and then on turn five, play an arbor up, and you have two minions on the board already that can attack. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, I'll put Then you I'll, get the arbor up tokens. Yeah. Then you get turn, you get another two, two. Yeah. That's an interesting. All right, and I'll then, put a three. I'll put a three with yeah, that. It also building. discounts our matriarch, which is. It, 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 Druid, Beast Druid, you can have a little bit of an early game plan. You also have like a big swing turn plan. This kind of helps with that. I'm into it. And uh, next up for beasts, we got Heart of the Wild. Druid spell, three mana, give a minion plus two plus two, then give all of your beasts plus one plus one. If you point this at a beast, that beast gets plus three plus three. Yeah. This is not all other minions, it is all your beasts. What do you think about um, Heart of the Wild? Have you seen this card? Yeah. I, I, I would rather just run Power of the Wild, right? Like. I don't know. Yeah, I was struggling with that exact same decision. This card lacks the flexibility of Power of the Wild, and in a deck that wants to be summoning beasts, well, Power of the yeah, Wild I mean, is look, a if you're, beast. If you're really ahead, you're usually really ahead on board by turn 5, so you can just go Arbor, which is just so much of a stronger card. And if you're behind, well, this card is garbage. So, yeah. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with my heart and say 1 on this one. I, I'm bad. with you on it. I, I, I cut mine for Power of the Wild. At yeah. first, I thought about playing it, and then I just—I thought about exactly how much has to go right for this. It's very conditional, and yeah. and the, the payoff isn't that big. Arbor up is just bigger. Like, and like I said, you, there's not this scenario where you have you know five one ones, five one one beasts on turn going into turn three. You know, like it's going to be turn five, and you'd rather just all right play play the arbor up, the card that's always good. You know, so anyways. Um, Next card, we got Pathmaker. Three mana, three, four, battle cry. Cast the other choice from the last choose one spell you have cast. Well, that's interesting. The, um, the card that I believe is the most impactful for this is one that's not being played right now. It is, uh, what is it called? 
primal totems, totemic something. The, the six mana summon four two two treants or rush them oh, and do yeah. overload. Interesting. I think you can build a deck that has like glow fly, runic carvings. That's the name. You can play glow fly, and you can play runic carvings, and you can play pathmaker. You can make a shitload of boards with these. Interesting. Yeah, pro pro here's the yeah. It doesn't people are thinking it doesn't work with the split spells? It does. No. Is, uh, if, if Jerry Rig splits a spell, this will not do the other choose one part. You, yeah. It's not a choose one spell anymore. It's just a spell that says do X. I I kind of think this is terrible. Um, it's just like I just don't see it working. Um, oh. unless you you uh, unless there's a a choose one like choose one. Deal 15 damage to your opponent's face or deal 14 damage to your opponent's face. Like, that it would be pretty good. You know, it's like you really need mm -hmm. such a strong choose one spell. And choose one spells all kind of suck, you know? Um, oh, yeah. You can play this with Capture Cold Tooth Mine as well. You can, on turn two, draw your lowest cost card. And on turn three, play this and then draw your highest cost card. Turnit Carvings is the big one for me. I. I'm giving this a, a bit of a Hail Mary. I'm going to go three on Pathmaker. I don't think that deck is actually that good, but I'm willing to be wrong about it because I think the upside of three mana get a three, four, and four two twos with or without Rush. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I, it's more like so. I think that four mana two two card is so bad. The six mana card is so bad. Um,. And the you know I, I just think that card's so bad in general that the fact that you even have to run that card and play that card, and then you get this on turn seven, you know, mm -hmm. yep, seems so. I'm gonna put this on one. I think it's just right. unplayable. So next up, Tide Seeker, another choose one synergy, three mana, two four battle cry. Your next choose one card costs two less. That's really good. Um, it does bang the mana from turn to turn. Yeah, this is this is nice. Uh, all right, I'll give this a three. All right, I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna give this a one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, at first, I looked at the effect and I thought it was quite good, but then I was just digging through how many choose one spells exist, what I'd want to play with it. I, I feel like I came to the conclusion that this is probably just too low on the priority scale. Yeah, it's it's a weird, but it's uh. So Fino's mentioned that what you can do is you can play this on turn whatever, then on the next turn you play Celestial Alignment, and then you have a zero mana Nourish. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. All right, yeah, I'm I'm happy with my three here. You know, so okay. okay. Still gonna go one because I feel like you probably wouldn't put this in Alignment Druid. Yeah, it's a separate matter. Next up, we got Dire Frostwolf. Four mana, four, four, beast with stealth. Death rattle, summon a two, two, wolf, also with stealth. I think this is too clunky, and I've said this like, Druid doesn't really want clunky stats like this. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it just, Druid already has enough time, like, fighting, you know, getting back on board, and this is just not the card. Yeah, it is a good arena card, but it's, uh, I think this is, I think I'm gonna go one. I think it's. Okay. I'm, I'm going to three this. Or three, three, okay. one, that, that's very cool. So what I see is that on turn three, I can play Frost Wolf Kennels. Get a 2-2 two, two with stealth. Mm -hmm. On turn four, I can play Dire Wolf and then get another 2-2 two, two with stealth from the Kennels. And on turn five, I still have that armor up plan. And I punch people in the face very, very hard. Plus it summons two beasts for Matriarch. Yeah, um... <laughs> then you, you, your opponent overwhelms you, like just gets plays face hunter. And they just kill you before that, you know. Like, yeah, sometimes. What, so I don't sometimes know. Sometimes it do be like that. The, the, the stealth is the one thing it does have going for it. That's real good. So I don't know. I still think it's a one, but yeah. All right. Got a big beast druid believer. It's fine. Next up, wing commander Mulvrick. Four mana, two five, legendary rush. Four minions, all of them have honorable kill. Summon a 2-2 two -two Weavern, Wyvern, whatever, with Rush. Wait, wait, wait. Rush, your, your minions have honorable kill. So I can just keep doing 2-2 two -two Weaverns. Yeah, this card on its own kills a Glowfly Swarm. 
basically. Like, I can just keep rushing stuff. Rush. This card's it's insane. Wonderful. I didn't see this one. Oh my god. This card, and this is like, this even addresses Druid's weaknesses, which are like wide boards. You know? Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, it does say honorable kill. It doesn't just keep summoning two twos every time you kill something. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of one. The, the biggest weakness of this card is the amount of one health minions, but. Um, yeah. Oh, someone was saying it works with Battle Cry, so. If you can. Works with Battle Cry. Like, like if you had like a like a Og Merchant and you did one damage to something, it would summon a 2-2 two -two Wyvern with Rush. Uh, yes, yes. All minions. Honorable kill. So if you have yeah. one one on board, you trade it into their whatever one. It also summons a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever this bumps and kills something, summons a 2-2 two -two Weaver. Whenever those kill something, summons Weavers, etc. All right, this is a fat four for me, you know? Just okay. like, uh, it's, it's insane. Nice. This card's so freaking good. And it like it's good in a way that's useful. You know, there's some cards where it's good, but I couldn't see how it sees play. Like like the, I could see so many games where like you're if you know you're playing against a druid and they happen to get the glow fly down first and you lose the game. And now all I need to do is have somehow be able you know, I, I play one of my stealth pools <laughs> and then I play this and I just clear their whole board. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna go it's either a one or a two on this. One or two. You're yeah. crazy. So it's fun. My it's thinking a... is that this is a conditional card that relies on something your opponent is doing to be good. This, does, this doesn't improve my deck. If I'm a beast druid, this isn't a beast card. If I'm an alignment druid, it's not an alignment card. If I'm a, uh, I'm a glowfly deck, this isn't a spell. I don't think this actually ends up going almost anywhere. It's not that it's a bad card. I just don't know if it fits Druid like at all. I mean, I just I I completely disagree with you because you know, Druid's yeah. just historical weakness is dealing with wide boards. Um, so it's like that. That's what's so nice about it. So it's it's the fact that like you know your opponent has you know a, a big field contact play, and mm -hmm. you might be able to like just start rushing things in and get you know might be able to get you know three or four free wyverns. Um, and then you have this on the board that's a must kill, you know? So, and any board matchup. So, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a solitaire meta, this card's not good, but like any board meta, like it's really, really good in my opinion. So, I just think all right. all that, right. that's cool. We got, right. we got some hard disagree here. Yeah. All right. Next up Wild Heart Guff, hero card, five mana. Battle Cry, set your maximum mana to 20, gain a mana crystal, it is full, draw a card. And your hero power becomes Nurture. Two mana. Choose one, draw a card, or gain a full mana crystal. You can play one mana Wild Growths, or you can Life Tap with no health downside. Otherwise, it is play Wild Growth and Shield Block, kind of. Your maximum mana crystals to 20. Yeah. Um, this seems good. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I, I think... I'm not convinced it's broken, you know, like... You, it, to do absolute broken druid stuff, you'd rather just have like celestial alignment. But like, I think it's, it seems like the overall effect is strong. And at five mana, you can get away with playing it without being like super head. You know, it, it's also nice that you play this on five, and that curves you direct at five mana, and that curves you directly into alignment on the next turn. That's true. Yeah, it gives you a little bit more health to survive and an extra card and. In those matches, like let's say the alignment mirror, where you don't want to play alignment, oh, that's also a good still point. Go to twenty. Yeah, and then you then you can go, you can go anaconda into alignment. You know when you yeah. hit it. So you're seldom, yeah. I think, going to twenty. But I think it's just shield block and wild growth in one card, which druid would play right. And yeah. Then you have more upside on top of that. So I'm going four on this, even if it's not going to break the game when you play it. I believe it is simply powerful enough for things Drew wants to do. I'm going to go three. So, right. yeah. Three makes sense in my brain as well. And last, but certainly not least, we got Frost Saber Matriarch. Seven mana, four, five, beast, taunt. Costs one less for each beast you have summoned this game. I feel like Thing this card's from below for beasts. Insanely good, you know? like, and It, it, it just slots into... Tauntered so well, like you don't even you don't even need to add more beast synergy. 
um, and you can use it with Oracle. So you don't even need the two yes. the the Razor Man. You just play this, get this down to zero mana, and you go Oracle, and you get two four fives. You know. Yeah. And Glowfly Swarm. Those are beasts. Yeah. So oh, wow. Jombre will love that, of course. Um, you can play this in your more wait, like Glowfly aggressive Swarm, beast are they druid. Beasts? They, they are. are beasts. Okay. So one Glowfly Swarm for a full board, in fact, does reduce Matriarch to zero. The downside there is you're putting more minions in your deck that wants to play Fungal Fortunes, but there is that potential. Yeah. I think it more likes it makes the cut in uh, Oracle Druid. But, uh... Oracle as well. Yeah. You can tutor with Cold Tooth Mind if that's a thing. I don't know if it is, but you can do yeah, it. Yeah, you could, you could play the... If you get this down to zero, you can go the two mana spell and then get two of these. <laughs> so... Um, yep. Yeah, I think it's a four. It's like really good. You can uh, go four on this. Uh, All right, and that does us for Druid, which we think easy. is very slightly better than Demon Hunter.